Hi, this is Jim Colton from GraphPad. In this video, I will demonstrate the new features added to multiple t-tests in PRISM 9. This procedure was developed to make it easier and faster to carry out multiple t-tests. For this analysis, you need two columns and multiple rows of data in a grouped data table. A t-test is performed on each row. Let's look at an example. Here we have a grouped data table with two cell lines, WT and KO in 24 metabolites, and we want to perform a t-test on each row. After clicking Analyze in the PRISM toolbar, you will find multiple t-tests under Grouped Analyses. The version 9 dialog box looks very different from the version 8 dialog box shown here. The version 9 dialog box has many new features and a simplified interface. From the version 9 Experimental Design tab, you can see paired t-tests are now available as well as non-parametric tests for both paired and unpaired t-tests. You'll also find Welch's unpaired t-test, which we'll leave selected for our analysis. FDR and adjusted p-values are now found on the Multiple Comparisons tab. I have selected adjusted p-values. There are a new set of options found on the last tab. These include surprise values, which we will select and interpret as part of our analysis. Clicking OK gives us a table of results where each row is a Welch's t-test. The benefit of Welch's t-test is that it makes no assumption about equal variances, although you lose some power to find a difference when you run this test as opposed to the classic unpaired t-test. The below threshold column indicates which adjusted p-values are below the alpha specified in the dialog box. We left alpha at the default level of 0.05. The surprise value, new to version 9, is reported in the last column. The easiest way to interpret the surprise value is to first round it off to the nearest integer. For example, with metabolite E, we would round this surprise value off to 6. This value tells you how unusual the corresponding p-value is in terms of a binary event like tossing a fair coin. Imagine tossing a coin 6 times and getting heads each time. This is about as unusual as observing a p-value as small as metabolite E's by chance alone. Note, metabolite E's p-value is 0 0.0167. Now let's run the classic t-test on each row. This test assumes equal variation for the two groups in a given row. These t-tests have slightly more power, but yield the same results with these data. The last test choice assumes all groups and all rows have the same variation, which is the same as performing a two-way ANOVA with multiple comparisons. This choice, if it can be safely made, has the most power. Here, there are two metabolites with a significant difference between WT and KO. Finally, if you can't assume normality, the Mann-Whitney non-parametric test is available in PRISM 9. However, these tests generally have low power. In this case, none of the results were significant. It's important to note the approach you choose should depend on the characteristics of the data and not which method produces the outcome you are looking for. Now, let's look at the multiple pair t-test option, which was added to PRISM 9. Here we have five patients that were measured for 24 metabolites before and after a treatment. The patients are in subcolumns. We will select the paired t-test and keep all the other options the same as before. The structure of the result sheet is similar to the unpaired t-test, but the formulas used in the analysis take into account the repeated measures on each patient. If you can't assume normality in the paired scenario, the Wilcoxon Matched Pairs Signed Rank Non-Parametric Test is available in PRISM 9. As with the Mann-Whitney non-parametric test, this test has low power as evidenced by the results here where none of the test results show a significant difference. In summary, PRISM 9's multiple t-test procedure can perform both paired and unpaired t-tests and includes non-parametric options for both, as well as additions such as Welch's t-test for when variances are unequal and surprise values which provide a whole new way to interpret p-values.